Hi everyone! In today's video we will learn how to create a line graph using Matplotlib in Python. But the most important, we will learn how to make your graph look not like this, but like this. There is a website called Our World in Data and they have very beautiful visuals. So I thought, why not to try to recreate one of their visuals? We will learn how to quickly clean your data, how to create a line graph using Matplotlib, and then we will go into details of different parameters, how to make it website worthy. You will learn how to add footers and headers, how to change all the colors of the lines and of the graph and much more. If you're new to this channel, I'm Karina, I'm finance person, turned data analyst, turned data scientist, and now I share my knowledge with other people online. So let's start. There is a website called Our World in Data, which have very beautiful visualizations. You can also find different data sets used to create those visuals. If you scroll a bit, you can find different interactive charts. IP interactive chart on global education. This one gender gap in primary, secondary and tertiary education. You can click download. You can download the image itself or you can download a CSV data that was used to create this visual. Let's make it bigger. This is a graph we will try to recreate. Create. When you download CSV file, you will see that there is a breakdown by different countries. If you look at the world breakdown, that what was used to create this visual. So when you downloaded the data, we will clean it now. We will remove information by every country except for the world. We will start with importing three libraries. We will import pandas library as pd, import numpy as np, and import matplotlib by plot as plt. If you're just a beginner, if it's your, one of your first videos, you watched. If you run this and you have an error, if it says that module not found, you need to install the library and to install library you say pip install and the name of the library that is missing. For example, pip install pandas and then you run it and then you rerun import. But since for me it's not the first project, I already have all these libraries installed. So first you install in libraries, then you import in the libraries. The next part we will read the file that we downloaded from the website. To read the file, we create a new data frame, df equals pandas.read underscore csv brackets and the path to our file. Let's run it. No error. To view five top rows of our data, we need to say df.head. Let's run it. That's how our data looks like. So we don't need entity, we don't need code. And as you know, we need to filter our data where entity equals worlds. First, we will filter our data to get only data for the world. Then we will group our data. And you can see that headers for each of the column is different from what we see on a visual. So on a visual, we see boys in primary education, girls in primary education. While you can see the names of our columns, for example, combined total net, enrollment rate, secondary comma male, so we need to rename our columns. So as I said, the first step, we will filter our data to keep data for world only. df equals name of our original data frame df, square brackets, and then we say the filtering condition. We want to filter where our column entity equals world. So we say df square brackets entity equals equals world. To remind that in Python, one equal sign is an assignment operator. And when we want to compare something that something equals something Something we need to say equal equal. Let's run it. I will create a new data set called DF transformed. So I will group my data by year. I will drop columns, entity and code, and I will rename columns that we have into the names we will be using in our visual. So we create a new data frame called DF underscore transformed equals brackets in the brackets. We say name of the original data frame, which is DF dot draw brackets because we want to drop columns, entity and code. So I say columns, square brackets, entity and code. Why square brackets? Because we use a list of columns. In Python, list is always surrounded by square brackets dot group by year. So we're saying how we want to group our data. We want to group it by year dot mean or average dot rename. And this is for renaming our columns. So I say columns equals and here I use curly brackets. Curly brackets used for dictionaries in Python. In quotes, you say the original name of the column, then colon, and then you say what you're renaming it to. So this is what I repeat for all six columns. Here we need to close our brackets. And to review five last rows of your data, we say name of the data frame dot tail. So with dot head, we saw first five rows. With dot tail, we view five last rows. So we can see that we dropped our entity and code. We have only year. Now all the columns were renamed. And we can see that girls in tertiary education, 40 
44.75 let's go back to our visual 44.8 which is 75 so that's great so we check that after all the our manipulation data reconciles to the data on the visual let's create the very basic line graph with matplotlib so to do that we say plt.figure brackets figure size equals 12 by 8 so it's 12 inches by 8 inches to create a visual we say plt.plot brackets and in the brackets we reference to the data set in our case it is df transform it is our cleaned data i will also visualize this time a legend so plt.legend brackets to display the visual we say plt.show brackets let's run it so this is very basic line graph with matplotlib so what we have we have x-axis y-axis we don't have any title because i didn't give one we don't have labels for x and y what you can see here we don't have data so actually our lines they interrupt and to fix that we need to interpolate our data and to make this visual looks like this visual there is a lot of work so first of all you can see we have outlines so we have this square black thing which we need to remove because we need to keep only x axis also we need to add these horizontal lines we need to change our y axis to percent we need to change our x axis not to show every tick we also need to add those round markers on our visuals of course we need to change the colors add titles or legend on this side and we need to add our header and footer let's start with interpolating the missing values for specific columns so we saw that data is missing here i don't know why my legend didn't show the data is missing for columns with girls in secondary education and uh, boys in secondary education to interpolate data we say name of our data frame we need to indicate which column we are fixing we want to fix girls in secondary education so we say df underscore transformed brackets girls in secondary education equals again name of the column dot interpolate brackets and same for boys in secondary education next thing we need to define colors so we need to define this colors for our lines and we also need to change everything from black to this gray there are several options how to define colors you can find websites like image color Picker, which i just googled and it was the first website that popped up you can upload the file like i did and then when you hover over it will show you different colors so if you click it can give you the color code other option i uploaded the file into chat gpt and i said give me the the color palette used in this image and it come up with codes so i will be using the codes that chat gpt provided to me we'll create our color scale and here we indicate the colors that i will be using for creating these lines also i defined a two grays i call them gray 30 gray 40 so this is two types of grays that we will use on our visuals potentially there should be more shades of gray used for headers and titles you know there is always room for for improvement let's create our line graph so again we will say plt.figure brackets fig size 12 by 8 and then we say ax equals plt.gca brackets our gca stands for get current axis ax is the variable that stores a reference to those axes allowing you to manipulate the plot details such as labels ticks and lines the order of things is up to you i've done many things back and forth trying to fix this visual so maybe there is a more logical way of you know starting with x axis making it right and moving to y axis moving to lines in my version will be a bit haphazard but we will get to the final result the first thing i will add round markers to each of the lines i will create a loop that iterates over each column in data frame df transformed and plots it on the same axis which is ax our loop is saying for i comma column in enumerate brackets df underscore transform dot columns colon and then ax plot so we are plotting on those axis brackets so our index which is our years will become our x axis our columns will become our y axis which color we will be using for our visual we will use color scale which is here for labels we're using columns marker or it is this round thing that we are adding to each of our lines then we need to select the size of these markers which is 2.5 lw sets the line widths of the plot the 
Zika lines make the plot easier to read and clip on equals a false parameter specifies whether the plot should be clipped to the axis region and false means the plot will not be clipped. So let's run our color scales and now run this bit. Our graph already looks so much better. First of all, you can see what we extrapolated. There is no blanks. Secondly, our lines already have the same colors as on our visual. And I must tell you that I had to go through several iterations to make sure that all the colors are in a correct order. So you have to play around with this. The next bit, I will choose Y axis format. My idea is to change this from 2040 to 20%, 40%. I will say, Y axis format. If you want to add comments to your code, use hash sign and then the text. We need to import another library, which is import matplotlib.tika and we import it as mtik and then ax.yaxis.setMajorFormatter in brackets we say mtik.percentformatter brackets. So this way we can change our y-axis to percent. Let's rerun this code. You can see that now we have percents here. As the next step, I want to add horizontal lines to our graph and I want to change our x-axis. So we have uh, 1820, 1850, then 1900. We will replicate exactly the same tick mark as we have in our final visual. First of all, we will add our gray horizontal lines. So we say ax.yaxis.grid brackets. In the brackets, we say true. We want to add them. Comma line style. We pick line style as dashed because here it is like little dashes. Dash dash. Comma line width 0.5. Here you indicate how wide this line will be. And we select in a color. I select in one of my grays. And then we set the specific x axis tick marks. So we say ax dot set underscore x tick brackets, then square brackets for the list, and we say which ticks we want. Let's run it again. Okay, so we're getting closer and closer. So the next step I suggest to remove this line so we keep only x axis and we also change the colors to gray. To remove the right and top spines, remove our borders, we say ax dot spines, then we say right, top and left, because that's what we're removing, dot set underscore visible, brackets false. So this will remove our top, left and right borders. We want to change color of our x-axis and the label. So we say x spines bottom, that's the one we kept, set underscore color gray 40, so we're changing the color, ax dot tick params for parameter brackets axis equals x color gray 40 and ax dot x axis dot label set color gray 40. So we're changing everything for our x axis and then we're changing color font size and weight for our y axis. We say ax dot tick params brackets axis we say this time y colors gray 40 label size equals 10. Let's run it and that's how it looks like. We have a couple of things left to add. We need to add our head footer and we also need to add our legend. This is a part which took me the most to create because names were overlapping especially for this part as we have two lines finishing almost on the same spot. Say we say labels equals df transform dot columns and then I'm creating this offset and this is the offset the position to help me avoid overlap. We're creating a loop that iterates over pairs of labels and offsets using the zip function. So enumerate brackets zip labels offset returns the index i along with the label and offset for each iteration. So df underscore transformed dot index minus one plus two sets the x position of the label. It gets the last index value and plus two shifts it slightly to the right. Y post sets the y position of the label which is adjusted to avoid overlap. A label is the text of the label which is our column name. Color equals color scale i sets the color of the label text based on the corresponding line color. Font size is the size of our font and VA equals center vertically align the label text to the center. Let's run it much better. So this is the bit that took me the most to creating those titles, making sure that they are the same colors 
as here, so for example, our first line is zero, zero, so you can see they stay where the last dot is. If I, for example, remove and create zero, zero, let's do it, you see we have these two labels overlapping. Now let's add our title. So we say fig equals plt.gcf, which is get current figure brackets, and we say figure.text brackets, then we indicate our coordinates, and this is what numbers you will be playing around to move it left and right to make Make sure that your title is located where you want it to be. In quotes, we indicate the title to our graph, comma, color, I pick gray 40, font name Georgia, font size 24, and it will be bold. Let's run it. Now we have this first header. The next part, we need to add this share of boys and girls with relevant education. Similarly, we again say fig.text brackets, x, y coordinates, then our title, and then color gray. This time we'll change color to make it slightly different and the font size 12. Let's run it. Now let's add this data source and we also add this node. Node I had to split in two so it looks the same like here. So again with fig.text brackets playing around with our coordinates adding this data source, font size this time 10, color 30, and the same for the very bottom node. Again, fig.text, this is the first part, this is the second part, as I told you, I split it into two parts. And now we have our footer, and let's add one little thing, we are missing the footer over here. So again, with fig.text, we adding it, we changing our coordinates, keeping again font size 10 and color 30. Let's run it. And here we are. Now our visual is very close to what we've seen in our world in data. I think it looks very good. I personally never liked the visuals in Matplotlib because of these uh, very bright colors. It gives me basic Excel vibes. Visuals in Seaborn and Plotly look much better, so I tend to use them if I'm creating uh, some presentation. But it's great to see that uh, you can also make changes to Matplotlib visual. I hope you learned something new in this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to click like and subscribe. It means a lot to me and I hope to see you next time.